What's up guys, you're watching Life by TCG. I have a quick update for you today of my latest tortured existence list for Pauper. So I think the last one of these I did was uh, just after Guilds of Ravnica came out, which was the first set of Ravnica 3. So that's obviously quite a long time ago um, and the format has shifted quite a bit, like we've had the whole Jeskai Astrolabe era come and go basically between then so I thought it would be a good idea to um, show you the latest version of the list that I've been using recently so the um, overall the strategy is still quite similar of course for tortured existence in the deck that's standard um, the same for commune for vessel you, again you see normally for commune is pretty standard and people play anywhere between like zero to four vessels depending on their preference but I think um, four is still pretty good just gives you the best chance of finding the tortured existence um, and then dig through the deck mill your own creatures into the graveyard to get them back later um, now we have the latest edition from um, Modern Horizons, which is Ransack the Lab. Some people have been playing that um, recently instead, which is uh, like a black anticipate, kind of. It's just uh, one in a black instant. Um, look at the top three cards. Oh, I have a copy here actually. Oh, I think I should have one. Yeah, here it is. Oh, it's a, oh, sorry, it's a sorcery. Um, one in a black sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So it's less mana than Vessel overall because it's two mana instead of three. But it, um, it looks one card less deep, only four cards and not three. Um, and importantly, um, Commune can't add a vessel, oh, sorry, commune can't add ransack into your hand um, because it's not a creature or an enchantment so um, it's not as good at chaining through your library when you're just really trying to dig um, as many cards as possible so for that reason I still prefer a vessel um, the fact that ransack can get any card is not particularly noteworthy because you're already basically building your deck to only have enchantments and creatures anyway so the fact that uh, Vessel can't get uh, instances or sorceries is not particularly interesting like, I guess that argument goes equally both ways because like Vessel can't get commune into your hand um, so yeah, you could test it, but overall I just still think that Vessel is probably a little bit better. Um, then for the lands, so four forests, eight swamp, I think this is the same as last time in terms of basics, then four jungle hollow of course, and then um, three guild gate and four rot farm so I think before I had only uh, three rot farm and four guild gate like it was the other way around and I just swapped it um, basically the bounce land is too good so and you can afford to play four like you, the thing you're afraid of is getting stuck with like bounce land only openers and then you can't really play anything but it doesn't happen often enough to be uh, worried about and the higher power of just having the four bounce lands is better so that's what we're doing now then for the creatures obviously every, uh, every other card on the deck is a creature so same as last time we have two Crows and Tusker two Gorgon Recluse um, one Horror of the Broken Lands three Golgari Brownscale 
and two Stinkweedum. So five creatures. Then two Spore Frog, two Fume Spitter, and one Sanitarium Skeleton. So I think all of these cards are the same as the previous version. And then um, four Crypt Rats. So last time I might have only had three Crypt Rats. I still think that's an uh, acceptable um, choice as well. I think you probably want all four of the rats somewhere in your 75 still, but you don't have to play all four of them main for sure. Um, but I think it's fine at the moment because the decks like Delva and um, Boros and Stompy are all pretty popular right now. So that's where I'm at on that. Um, so yeah, three or f three or four rats main is fine, but I wouldn't go under three. Uh, but the last few creatures I've got here are a bit different. So in the last video, just to check, so I had one Yobamaya Elder, four Putrid Leech, one, two, three, four, and uh, Mood. Oh, I had, yeah, and a mood mark painter, and I had two horrors and only um, three crit rats. So, the biggest breakthrough, or the biggest change, rather, at the moment is I'm not playing Future Leech anymore. Um, it just doesn't really line up well against any deck in the format. Um, like, against the. Um, the kind of fear decks, I'll call them, like Boros, uh, Delva, um, decks like that, it's better to just try and go bigger than them, rather than try and fight on the board with, uh, like, efficient creatures, so it's not the best card in that matchup, um, then against, um, Tron, it seems okay because it's like quite aggressive but what I found in that matchup a lot of the time is that you want to end up activating crit rats for four because that's how you disrupt the flicker stuff on the mnemonic walls so in, in that situation it's really critical that um, putrid leech only becomes a 4-4 four four as well not a 5-5 five five. so there's no way it can survive um, when you do that so, you know, I used to think that, you know, the um, Putrid Leech was quite good against Tron decks just because it's so aggressive, but um, it's actually not quite the right threat in that matchup. Uh, anyway, I don't think. And then against aggro decks, so against like Affinity or um, Swampy, for example, in those matchups, I think it is okay. Um, just because it's so easy for it to trade with stuff. Like if they try to savage swipe it, then you still trade anyway, you just make it a 4-4 in response. So even though you're paying life, normally it's good enough. Um, but even then, because it's costing you life, um, and it's easy for your opponent to play around it with removal or anything like that, um, it's not the most ideal card for those matchups anyway. Um, and you have other ways to fight those decks uh, without trying to fight on the board with Putrid Leech. So what I've instead got, basically, instead of the Putrid Leech, is two Sakura Trivelder and uh, a Gurmag Angler and a Rhizome Lurcher. So uh, how this basically works is um, you still have the same like early players that the Future Leech gave you with the Sakura Tribe Elders instead of some of the Leeches and then you have um, instead of 
like two mana four fours as your threats. You go slightly bigger than that with the uh, Gimmick Angler and the uh, Rhizome Lurcher. So in the when the the set first came out, Guilds of Ramblica, I didn't really rate this card very highly. Um, I thought it was kind of unnecessary. Um, and you know, maybe it kind of is, but it's just such a powerful uh, card by itself. It's very easy to make it 7-7 um, seven, seven or bigger, and then it really um, puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to deal with it quickly. Um, in the same uh, way, or well, the same way of thinking about it, it's because uh, Rise of and also Guma Angler, they're both 5-5 uh, five, five or bigger, or a Rise of Lurcher is usually always 5-5 five, five or bigger. Um, it avoids that same rats problem that the Future Leech has against Mnemonic War, so you don't have to worry about that either. Um, and usually these come down quickly enough against decks like Stompy and Affinity that they're still good enough as blockers. Um, especially when you have the Sakura to ramp into them. Um, and then be because they're 5-5 five, five or bigger and not just 4-4, four, four, they're even stronger against things like Mere Enforcer or uh, Savage Swipe or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, this is the arrangement that the deck has at the moment. So if we kind of uh, arrange that out a little bit. some kind of curve. Oh, I guess you guys would be more used to looking at it this way. I'll try and fix that. So we've got ones, twos, threes, fours, frogs, the, the treasures are threes, I guess. Or is kind of a five. Gorgon Recluse is kind of a five. That's the awkward thing about showing the deal like this because you don't really ever pay the recommended retail price for any of the creatures. So yeah, kind of like that. Um, so Rhizome Lurcher could almost just be like a second Gourmet Angler but because of the way the Delve clashes you can't really afford to do that. Um, multiple Gourmet Anglers tends to be a bit clunky so one Lurcher and one Angler is fine. I like how I think the one angler is really good. I used to be not so convinced about it, but I think having the ability to make one mana five fives is really powerful. Um, so I think what you should probably always play just the exactly one copy of it. Um, and then I think the the rising lurch is still a little bit more optional, uh, just because at four mana is a lot more expensive than good angler normally costs. And you don't necessarily always need a card like that to help you win but because it's just so powerful and it helps you win the game quickly um, it's just generically good in basically any situation um, and then the last two creatures um, I have to proxy them because I don't own the physical copies right now is one fairy macabre um, just it's the best way to fight the flicker stuff um, I think it's good enough that you can play it main. In weird situations where the effect's not good and your tortured existence is down or whatever, you can just cast it as like a flying grey ogre, which is fine, Mrs. Delver and stuff, so it's not the worst card. Um, but yeah, when you when you need graveyard hate, it really is the best. And then the, the last card is some sort of discard creature. So what a lot of people like to play is Mesmeric Fiend. Um, I really don't like that because it needs sack outlets to be the most effective and all of the sack outlets and porpoise suck. Um, carrion feed is really not good for this deck because it's not aggressive at all. Um, you don't really have any free creatures to sack. Um, you can do it with um, Grave Scrabbler if you're playing that which is like kind of gives you free creatures but if you're pulling that off you should be far enough ahead that you're winning anyway pretty much. Um, so it's like pretty basically just overkill. Um, so yeah, like your deck's not really aggressive at all, you're like a board sweeping control deck, so carrion feed is not the best fit anyway. You don't really have 
the free creatures to feed to it so the effect isn't that good in most situations. Um, you're basically just trying to play this creature just so it can be like a mesmeric fiend enabler. Um, and, and there's no, no creature you can play in this format that's good in that role. Um, Viscera Seer is not very good just because it's so low impact you don't really want to waste a card on it. Um, there's the new one from War of the Spark that's like sacrifice a creature draw a card which is really nice but it just costs way too much mana. It's like 3 mana to cast and 3 mana to use. Um, so I don't know how good that is either. And then just the fact that you need any creature at all to combo with Mesmeric Fiend just makes me not like Mesmeric Fiend that much. So um, one, one option that I think you could play for this discard creature is Thralth Surgeon, which I've been having a bit of success with. Um, so it's one black for a 1-1, one, one, and it has one and a black, sacrifice it as a sorcery, look at your opponent's hand and they discard a card um, of your choice, so it's kind of like a thought seize. Um, I've been having a lot of success with that card. Basically, Fairy Macabre, so you imagine this is Fairy Macabre and the Thrall Surgeon. So Fairy Macabre on its own is not the best versus the uh, controlling decks, specifically Tron. Um, because they can hold cards in their hand to um, wait until they have a situation where they can play around it. And the other thing is that the Tron decks can just hard cast and Rover Horror from their hand. Um, and that really messes you up because your mana base is quite reliant on the rock farm. So it can be a really um, punishing tempo play when they didn't rover horror your bounce land. And also um, they can didn't rover horror your tortured existence and then counter spell it on the way back. Um, and then you're kind of in a rather dire situation. So being able to basically like thought seize their uh, board interaction, their didn't rover horror out of their hand is a uh, effect that is quite useful to have. So Thrall Surgeon is good for that. The other interesting thing about Thrall Surgeon is that it can actually discard lands, which is not um, and if something you normally see, like when you have Jurious and Forces, um, obviously they can't discard lands because that would maybe be a bit strong being able to do that on turn one. But um, Thrall Surgeon has no restriction on any of the cards it can discard. So sometimes you can hit Tron lands with it, which is funny to see. Um, normally you don't get the right mana curve for that to happen. Um, it's quite difficult. But the other good thing about that is if your opponent Bajuka bogs you, um, normally what those decks will do is then they'll play a Bounce Ant to pick up their Bajuka bog to try and Bajuka bog you again. But uh, when they do that, you can throw a Surge in the Bajuka bog out of their hand. So that's quite a cool trick you can do with that card as well. Um, the other suggestion I've had for the discard creature is um, Augur of Skulls, which is one black for a 1-1 one, one skeleton. Um, you can regenerate it to a 1 and a black, and it has the ability to um, activate only in your upkeep, sacrifice it, your opponent discards two cards, or maybe it's just target player discards two cards. Um, so that costs less mana to use than Thrall Surgeon. Um, and it has slightly more impact on the board as well because it has the regenerate ability which can come in handy in some spots but um, Tron decks might be a little bit more insulated against a uh, mind rot than uh, like a targeted discard so I really have to think about that a bit um, just to examine um, you know which one really is stronger uh, against decks like Affinity, being able to duress them so they can't set up a fling combo on you is quite good as well. Um, just in, in things like that where you really want to take some key piece, uh, Thrall Surgeon seems like it might be quite a bit better than Augur of Skulls, but that's another thing you can think about. And then uh, again, the the fourth Crypt Rats could be another copy of either of those, or if you want any more um, unique effect. So uh, Abyssal Gatekeeper is maybe something that you could play. Um, or basically any like metagame core. So like a good anti-aggro creature is um, uh, what is it called? Ruthless Ripper. Um, what just Death Touch guys are quite good right now because they're really good into um, Savage Swipe from the Stompy decks. Um, 
or if you're worried about Delbo, you can play like a Penumbra Spider, you know, anything like that. So the, um, I do think this should be at least one Macabre, this should be a discard creature. The, the fourth Crip Rats and the Rhizome Lurcher are maybe optional, you could switch those around. But I like uh, the Grimag Angler, I like two Cross and Tusker, I like two Gorgon Recluse, I like the one Horror Solid. I don't think you need Grand Scrubber still. Five Dredges is fine when you have the eight Dig Spells, the Vessels and the Communes. Then three or four Crit Rats. Two Tribalder is pretty good, I think. Two Spore Frog in the main, two Fume Spitter and the Skeleton, all of that I think is pretty solid. So just quickly, I'll try and imagine a sideboard for this. Um, I don't have any sideboard on hand for this right now on paper because the deck is like half built. So I'll just deal out 15 cards and try and imagine that for you. So what I think you should have is the the other three Fairy Macabs should be in the sideboard. Um, just because it gets troll and the matchup is bad enough, the deck is popular enough, it's the best card. Um, yeah, basically that's it. Um, nothing more to say about that. Just randomly hoses like Exhum decks as well, but that's not really a huge part of the meta right now. I just think that uh, it's worthwhile to have that slot versus Tron. Um, then the way the main deck works, I think with the cards you have to board out, I think you want another discard creature, so like another Thrall Surgeon probably, um, uh, against the like control slash Tron decks, and then uh, Thorn of the Black Rose as well. So that gives you a lot of coverage versus like control and Tron kind of stuff. So that's three Fairy Macabs, one discard creature, so like a Throg Surgeon, and uh, Thought of the Black Rose. Then you want the other two Spore Frogs against um, decks like Boggles and Heroic and that sort of stuff. Um, Tribe or Is It Blitz, you know, if any of these things are floating around, then you want the extra Spore Frog. Um, if you don't have um, another, if you don't have the fourth. Crit Rats main deck, you want to play that um, uh, in your sideboard as well. Otherwise, it, this can be one of the tech slots that I talked about before, so like a Ruthless Ripper or a Penumbra Spider or something like that. I think the deck wants maybe like two life gain cards, um, so either Nor to the Bone or um, there's a new card from M20 which is called Healer of the Glade. It's like a one mana, one two uh, for green mana. When it comes into play, you gain three life. So, obviously, um, Nor to the Bone will, can gain you like ten life when you cast it, which is going to be a lot more than what the Healer of the Glade can do. The problem with Nor to the and Nor to the Bone also has the benefit that you can dredge into it because it has flashback. So even if you have no tortured existence, it still works. The problem is that it's only active on turn. Um, three or later because of its mana cost and you also need to have the setup of putting creatures in your graveyard so I'm not too sure um, which is the most effective choice uh, to, against burn so the thing is that this deck has a really strong matchup against burn if you can make it until like turn four or five without dying because the looping the brown scales um, with tortured existence or even just dredging one brown scale every turn is like um, really hard for Burn to beat. The problem is that you don't really have too many good answers for Thermo Alchemist in your deck, um, and the um, they can just like goldfish you before you have time to gain life or uh, interact with them really at all. So some some kind of anti burn card in the sideboard is still needed. I think the two Wicker Bow Elder. Uh, as usual, I like this card better than Caustic Caterpillar because um, the 4-4 four four is really good against Affinity um, and then in terms of like the mana efficiency argument, you have uh, Fume Spitter in your deck to reset this uh, 
in situations like when you're playing against bo uh, boggles or something where you want to use them multiple times. Um, yeah, versus Boros as well, being able to have a four boys so much better against Uncle Journey to nowhere compared to a Caustic Caterpillar. So yeah, uh, two work about it, I like that. Um, and then these last few cards, I think what I normally play for these last few cards is like enchantment based removal spells. So like a dead weight or a oubliette or a, something like that. Um, and without putting too much more thought into it, I would assume that is probably correct. Um, but again, you have a sort of a bit more flexibility with these slots. Um, you just have to look at your main deck and look at the matchups and uh, think about what's the most effective. So, in terms of these choices, like against really fast aggro decks like Stompy, Deadweight is probably one of the better choices. Um, if you're playing against Burn, Lignify can be okay because it kills um, Thermo Alchemist uh, pretty effectively for only 2 mana. But the problem with a card like Lignify is that um, it's not so good against Delvedex because the thing can still attack. So then if you don't block it, they can pick it up with Ninja and your Lignify goes away. Um, if you're playing against Stompy and you Lignify something, then if it has like a Rancor on it, it can still attack you. So that's not great either. Um, and then you can think of something like Oubliette or maybe Seal of Doom, which they like have the most coverage against different threats, but they're also the slowest because they cost three mana. So depending on what exactly you're trying to be, all of these things can be um, valid choices. So you just have to really consider like what you're boarding in and out and what meta you expect to face. So just to reiterate that uh, one more time, three Fairy Macabre, one Discard Creature, one Thorn of the Black Rose, um, two uh, Spore Frog, one either the fourth Crypt Rats or some kind of probably anti aggro creature um, for this slot, two Wicked Bow Elders and two Life Gain cards, and then probably three um, removal spells. But um, again, in terms of just these, these removal spells, it's kind of like a wishy washy you know, like, yeah, well, it can't be that bad. Like, you could even just shore up the, the burn matchup and play more life gain cards, or, um, you know, probably the removal would have some application against the burn decks, but the life gain would be better, you know. Um, these last few cards is not something that I've really solidly mapped out yet. But yeah, anyway, that's the, uh, that's what the sideboard would be. So yeah, the most the most interesting breakthrough is the um, losing all of the putrid leeches and playing Sakura Tribe Elder and some bigger creatures instead, and then playing some main deck answers for Tron in the form of Macabre and a discard creature. I think that is uh, the most notable development. And of course, you have the No Scrabbler and the Gorgon Recluse is probably like still considered pretty unorthodox, but I've already explained that uh, choice in the previous video, so I won't go into that uh, here. So yep, that's it for Tortured Existence. Uh, I'm going to do a, another quick video on Tron as well, and then maybe a legacy review of what I played in China a couple of weeks ago. So uh, yep. That's Life ITCG, Corporate, Tortured Existence, signing out.